you are here among us, for we have gathered in your name. We can feel your presence in this place. You are here among us. You are enthroned upon our praise. You are here. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here today that came out on this not as cold, but still cold, snowy morning. Um, and a special uh, welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. Uh, will you please stand for the call to worship? Welcome home. Welcome in. Here we find a song for our souls and healing for our wounds. Welcome home. Here we find children's laughter that changes dark clouds away and quiet prayers that lead us to still waters and green pastures. Welcome to this holy space. Welcome home. God has been expecting you. Will you join me in prayer? We praise you, extraordinary God, for the holiness of ordinary things, a gathering of fellow believers, a song of praise, a prayer of thanksgiving, a word, a loaf of bread, a cup, a fountain of water. Send your spirit to us and clear through our dry and brittle places. May the Spirit seep into the cracks and crevices of our hearts that we might know you more fully and worship you more deeply. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
and welcome. It is good to have all of you here in this space and online here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is First Christian Church here in Zanesville, Ohio, and I am Pastor Laureen Rowe. I have several announcements to share with you this morning. Our new TV monitor is up. And we give thanks to the Rhodes family, Greg, Aaron, Lincoln, and Ron for spending the majority of their day here yesterday. As you know, with any installation of tech or anything, it never goes without a hiccup or four. And so they were here, I think, until the wee hours of the morning, some of them. And as you can see, there's still some cords hanging, so we're not live with it yet, but soon we will be when you see them as you pass them this morning, extend a big thank you for them and their efforts to get that going for us. I also want to thank all of you who went to Russo's on Tuesday night to eat some pizza and support our youth. And again, I forget that when I start talking, I can take this off. It's not much better, except that I knock my earpiece off. Y'all might get me trained in a few years. So there we go. I understand that uh, you all are like me and pizza lovers. I was out of town, so I was unable to participate in that. But Kim will give us a final total once she has that. And if you are a pizza lover, you'll enjoy their next fundraiser as well. They are selling pizza or pepperoni rolls. So see any of our youth and buy a bunch of those. They go in the freezer so you can buy a year's worth supply and help our youth get to New York this summer for their mission trip. Uh, another big thing that is happening is, and it begins tonight, and I encourage all of you to make sure you're signed up for one of these, but it's a meet and greet the pastor. I would be that pastor. So please come and meet me and let me get to know you better. And you get to know me better. Sitting around a table is so much easier to get to know one another and begin that relationship that we are going to enjoy for many years ahead. There are sign-up sheets on the bulletin in the narthex, and I've looked at them, and there's plenty of space in each of them. So if you get home or you online say, oh, I didn't sign up, I can't go. Or if life changes and you can't go to one but can go to another, just show up anyway because there's space on those and I want to meet you and, and I want to greet you. In three weeks on Sunday, Feb February 20th, from 1 to 4 in the afternoon, there will be an open house here to celebrate Pastor Dawn's and Tim's ministry. Um, come, invite Friends, neighbors, come. There's a sign-up sheet out on the bulletin board, I noticed. If you want to bring some cookies or help with punch supplies or whatever, you can sign up. And there's also a donation place for it. And then on the 27th of February, our regional pastor and president, the Reverend Alan Harris, will be here in both worship services that morning. He will preach both worship services to celebrate Dawn's 38 years of ministry. And so please be here the, that Sunday. I hear that there's some surprises that will happen that morning for Pastor Dawn. So Dawn, it's going to be a great day. And so make sure you're here and invite others that have been blessed by her ministry to join us on that day. At this time, I would like to invite all our children to come forward for our children's time. How is 
everybody this morning? Are you good? You good? I hear that most of you only went to school two days this week. One. One. Wow. Two days, one day, one and a half. You might have had one and a half, but then they went ahead and closed it. Did you start off with a delay, and then they went ahead and closed it? No such luck. Thir- thurs- well, I hope you go to school all week this week. It's better that way. So I went to the store, and I got some things. Do you all like apples? Yeah, I like apples, too. So I got some apples, and I wanted to show them to you. This apple is kind of red, but it's got some yellow on it. And you know what? I left them in my car last night, and they've been sitting on this bench up here since I came in, and they're still frozen. (laughs) They're still frozen. But anyone like the color of that one? Want to hold on to that one for me? You will? Thank you. That's a gala apple. That one's kind of sweet, but got a little bit of tart. This one's green. Anyone like the green kind of tart ones? All right, you want to hold on to that one for me? That's a Granny Smith apple. And this one looks a little bit like our gala, but it's got a little more yellow. And it's got some hues of pink in it. Anyone want to hold on to this one? All right. That one's called the Pink Lady. And then we have a yellow one. Isn't she pretty? She's pretty. Who wants to hold on to the yellow one for us? You hold on to it, Alex? All right, that one's name is Opal. And then we have Mr. Red. Mr. Red. Mr. Red. Isn't he pretty? Look, he's dark red on this side, and he's lighter red over here. He's got some freckles. You see his freckles? He's got freckles. Who would like to hold on to Mr. Red? Will you, Skylar? That's the red delicious. All of these apples are different, aren't they? And if I'd let you bite into them, which I don't recommend because they're still frozen, um, they would taste different. Like the Mr. Red, he is very sweet. But Granny here, she's super tart and sour. But they're all different. But they're all apples. And they're all really good for us. Well, that's like us. We're all different. Sometimes we can be really, really sweet. I don't know. Sometimes I can be kind of sour. How about you? Do you ever get a little sour? Yeah, yeah, sometimes we get a little sour. But Jesus wants us all to be together. And Jesus wants to use all of us, regardless of our shape or our color or what we look like. Jesus wants us all to be together. And Jesus will go out looking for us. Say, if Granny was missing, would you go looking for Granny? Yeah. If Gala was missing, would you go looking for Gala? (laughs) Yeah, you would. You'd go looking for him. And that's what Jesus does. Jesus wants us going to look for those who are lost. So let us pray. Lord, thank you for these children who sit before you today. We ask that your blessings pour over them and over all the children of your world. Send us, use us, use these children to find the lost ones that do not know you. Lord, we pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to take my big frozen apples back, so if you'll pop them into the bag. (laughs) He was taking me literally. And I have sliced apples for you to take with you as you head back. You can either go out for children worship and wonder. Mr. Larry's standing over there waiting for you. Or if you want, you can get one of the worship bags and head back to your seat. And do any of our children that are sitting out there, would you like apples? All right, well, they're going to be up here on the front bench if you change your mind and want apples at any time during the service. Just, just let someone up here know and they'll pass them back.
Hear the word of the Lord as recorded in Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked, from the, gasp, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. This is the word of life. blessed to have two baby dedications today one at each service and I wanted to make sure I got we got things right at the end of eight days he was called Jesus and when the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and I would invite you to bring your child up Jesus said, let the children come to me, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as they. Aw, sweetie. They're not too, yeah, you just wanted to see them, didn't you? Well, it is a, a pleasure to reintroduce to you. We ha you may not have seen them for a while, but Amy and Kyle Mc Lamaster come with um, to, to bring their newest addition to their family. And we are so glad you did. And I would ask you, what is the name of your child? Quincy Marie Lamaster. Quincy Marie. And yeah, you're all dressed up for this day, aren't you? Yes. Oh Lord, gracious and merciful, Grant us your blessing as we wait before you. Bless this child, O Lord, with strength of body, mind, and soul, and grant that her growth may ever be toward you. And now, Quincy Marie, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. I think we have some cousin competition going on here. <laughs> Amy and Kyle, in recognition of your commitment to one faith, one Lord, one spirit, one God who is creator of all, do you wish your child to share your faith and that of the Christian community? Do you reaffirm your willingness to give yourself unreservedly to God's service in the church family? and encourage the Christian faith for your child? Do you pledge to walk with your fellow members of the body of Christ in Christian faithfulness and love? Will you endeavor to make your family a genuine, fruitful body of Christ? Will the congregation please stand? Followers of Jesus Christ, our Lord has commanded us to serve in his love and to teach his will and his word. Do you promise, therefore, to declare the gracious word of life to this child, to love her, to assist these parents that in time Quincy Marie might set her hope in God? If so, please say, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. Let us pray. Gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, accept the gratitude of our hearts for the birth of Quincy Marie and for the preservation of her family and sanctify the solemn vows which we have made before you that by our devotion and the leading of your spirit, 
Quincy Marie may become a radiant child of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would invite you, if you are related, if you claim Quincy is part of your family, stay standing and everybody else can sit down for a minute. And we welcome you. And Quincy, when you... When you, your mom and dad tell you about this day, I'm sure they're going to mention your part in it. Yes, you wanted to, you wanted to, yeah. Lorena I think she wants to be the preacher today. But tell, you'll tell her that this fa your family all came to celebrate. You can be seated. We're glad you're here. And hang on just a moment because we want to have you remember this day uh, with a certificate. And we have, uh, it's our tradition to give a cradle cross. And for years, Henry Gorski made our cradle crosses. And we, we ran out of his supply. And we are blessed that Jim McPherson and Dave Higgins both stepped up and we have a, a new batch of cradle crosses that you might be able to tell Quincy about this day. Thank you. Thank you. Quincy, I would introduce you to the congregation, but I'm not sure how happy you'd be about that. <laughs> Maybe you can just may, let her do what would you come to me? No? Yeah, maybe? Say, so, yeah, let's go. See, see, these folks just promised to help make sure you grow big and strong and that you know all about how much God loves you. Yeah, we'll go over to this side, too. Because they want to see you. Look at all those. See? Yeah. And oh, the cousins left. <laughs> God bless your family. So glad to share with you today. God bless you. And now as we enter into our time of prayer, I have a couple things to add. Our, our list on the back looks a lot like last week's. Hasn't changed very much. Our, our prayer list, I'm happy to say we don't have anybody in the hospital. And we haven't had additions, but I do want to lift up today our homebound members. You can imagine that in this winter on these wintry days, uh, it, they, they feel especially isolated at times. Maybe they don't get to see their friends and neighbors as much as they uh, would like to. And so please um, lift all of our homebound members in your prayers. I would invite you to continue to pray for Jared and our National Guard who are helping out uh, in our community and around the state. We lift up our congregation as we are in the midst of this uh, leadership transition. And Lorene, we pray for you. Lorene had her house closing this week and uh, now is in the midst of painting, moving all those arrangements that you can imagine. And so we keep you in prayer because we know that not only are you doing those things? You are trying to get to know everyone. And so our prayers are with you. I would um, add to our list Bill Factor. I understand he um, was delivering meals for Christ's table and uh, had a fall or a slip or something and hurt his back. So please keep him in prayer. And I understand that Sharon Krause's brother, um, Kenny, died yesterday. 
I, we have had Marcus Gators, the fourth grader from John McIntyre. We have had him on our prayer list since August when he was admitted to Children's Hospital very ill with COVID. And uh, he has been through quite a lot for a fourth grader and continues to have a ways to go. But we do rejoice with Marcus that he is planning to be discharged tomorrow and come home. <laughs> so we, uh, we rejoice in that and our prayers are, are with him and his family as uh, they get him back home. Are there other joys or concerns we should share? Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus to multiply all you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us be faith-filled, and desire to increase your glory and the goodness in this world. Make us people who share both in word and deed that which you have given to us. We pray for the church gathered today, both here and around the world, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all of their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray for those who are poor in body or in spirit today, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair, especially those we have lifted to you today. Minister by your spirit and through us to all those for whom we have prayed and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. earth has quaked before moved by the sound of his voice and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard and through it all
get transported in the middle of that and then I'm like oh yeah I gotta get up there and talk thank you thank you all when I bought the apples for the children's moment um, I put them in my Kroger click list order and I wanted to choose variety and different colors so I just went to the fresh produce and vegetables thing clicked it and typed in apples and all the apples appeared, and they were so beautiful. They were lovely deep reds and rich golden yellows and 
variations of those colors and bright, bright greens, those apples were perfect. Because, of course, they had been in a photo studio and had their pictures taken. But when I got the apples and they looked at them, they weren't perfect, but they were still nice apples. And I left them in my car overnight and they froze. And so now they're a little harder than they were and a little wrinklier than they were. They're far from perfect at this point. I noticed when I was passing them out to this group of kids that um, the opal, which Alex was holding, has a nice big bruise on the side of her now. They aren't perfect, but they're still beautiful apples with lots of good nutrients for us. And none of us are perfect, and God doesn't want us to be perfect. When we think we are perfect, we stop relying on God, and God cannot flow through us in the same ways. And when we recognize that we are imperfect and we have flaws, we can connect with others. Where I may have weaknesses and flaws, someone else has gifts and strengths in that area. And so as we come to this time of sharing and giving, we do so with all faith that what we have to give, as imperfect as it may be, God will bring that together with someone else's gift, and God's glory will shine through that. That's one of the beautiful things about giving in church, is that God brings it together with the gifts of others so they can be used for the glory of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you can satisfy every desire and need. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. May we be filled with all the fullness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When I was here with you in December, I shared a story about my granddaddy with you. Well, today I have a story about my grandmother and my granddaddy, and I promise I won't always be telling you stories about my grandparents, but today's fits so well. My grandparents lived just a few blocks away from us, and we spent a lot of time. We would ride our bikes to their house and spend oodles of time in their yard. They lived on um, two acres. And just under a half of that was filled with apple trees. And we spent many, many times climbing those trees and running around underneath them and just having a good time as kids. Also in my grandparents' backyard was a very large picnic table that in the summer and especially in the fall, we would have picnic dinners at their house. And we would all gather around that big table. My mother and my grandmother would make a fabulous picnic feast, and we would all eat. And after we finished eating, many times my granddaddy would tell us to go start picking up the ground apples. Now, the reason he would tell us to do this is because they had a cider press at their house, and now, if you know anything about ground apples, they're not the best apples. They've hit the ground, they've got a bruise, they're banged up. Um, sometimes a critter or two might have eaten a little part of them. They weren't the best apples. But Granddaddy would have us go pick up the apples, bring them over to the cider press. 
we would throw them in the top bin and he would crank it because there were chopping blades in there that would chop up those apples and dump them down into a big wooden slatted bucket. And until that was full, he'd keep telling us, go get more apples. And so we would run off and we'd get more apples and we'd bring them back, throw them in, he'd crank. And finally, that big wooden bucket would get full of chopped apples. And he would put the wooden lid that fit right inside that bucket down in there. And then there was another crank. And he would start cranking and he'd let us take turns helping him crank, although I really doubt how much we were really helping. But he still let us help crank that and it would squeeze down those apples. And then there was a trough. And out the end of that trough came the cider. And at the bottom of the cider was a big pitcher. And the cider would come out of the barrel, the bucket, into the trough and into the pitcher. And my grandmother always had for us little paper Dixie cups. And she would give them to us so we could go to the bottom and get a little bit of the cider right out of the press. And I can still remember how sweet that cider was. It was some of the best out of those ground apples. Jesus knew that after his death that there would be pressure and there would be hard times and the disciples would feel beaten up and bruised. And he knew that they would need a meal where they could gather and remember the gift of his life. That as they lived as his disciples beyond his resurrection and ascension, that they would need this meal in times of pressure to remember the sweet, sweet gift that was given to them. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that our imperfect hearts are invited to this table that we may share as a family the joy of our growing family in your love and the sorrows both spoken and felt. May we enjoy each other's company and enjoy your love in whatever state we come. Amen. Amen. Jesus, when he was gathered with the disciples, took a loaf of bread and he blessed it. And then he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup, and he gave thanks for it. And he said, This is my blood, which is shed for each of you. Take and drink in remembrance of me. One of the things that probably most of you here in the sanctuary cannot see, but I can see and those online can see, is the energy and spirit in which they are playing and singing. There is such beautiful God energy coming through you all, so thank you. Thank you for doing this, leading us to God. Our second text today comes from the Gospel of Luke. 
it immediately follows our text from last week. In fact, we are repeating um, verse 21, which was the end last week. It is the beginning this week. Let us hear these words of the Lord. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. The truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them, and went on his way. May God add blessing and understanding to the reading of the word. Most of my life right now is in boxes and suitcases. The good news is, as Dawn shared, that's going to be coming to an end. I closed on my house on Friday and I get possession this Wednesday so the painters can begin painting and putting a fresh coat of paint all inside, and then the movers come the following Wednesday. One of the biggest issues, as I'm sure many of you know, is that when you are moving, invariably something gets lost. Somehow, in moving my things into my office here, I have lost my box of markers. Now, it's not a little box. It's a pretty big box. Remember, I, I do camp, so big box of markers. Kim carried them in. I saw her carrying it. She remembers carrying it. But my sons and their partners who helped me unpack do not remember it at all. I can't find that box anywhere. I'm trusting that it's going to turn up eventually. If not, I just pray that wherever it is, there is someone enjoying making the world a more colorful place just as much as I like making the world colorful. Recently, I read an article about things, something important that has gotten lost. It's apples. There is... It's, there's an Apple project, the Lost Apple Project. It was formed because of approximately 12,000 varieties of apples that have gotten lost or are in danger of being extinct. Now, a little history on apples for you. Apples were brought to America by the early colonists and were grown for a variety of important reasons. But they, as I said, have been lost over the years. At one point in time, there were over 17,000 different varieties of apples. Today, there are only 5,000. According to Modern Farmer magazine, the Lost Apple Project has found 23 lost or nearly extinct apple varieties since 2014. So in eight years, they found 23. We have ways to go for 12,000. In particular, they are currently seeking to identify and preserve any apple trees that have been planted before the year 1920, specifically in the Pacific Northwest. Now, what I found as I was reading this article was very interesting and kind of cool were the names of the apples. Excelsior, Streaked Pippin, Sari Synap, and Nero. 
Want to take a bite of Excelsior or Nero? <laughs> These varieties, we won't find them in the fruit section at Kroger or Walmart or Aldi because they're in danger of being extinct, so they're being protected very closely. So it's important to ask the question, who runs such a project as the Lost Apple Project? One of the founders is a former FBI agent and IRS investigator named Dave Ben Scooter. He says, the history these old apple trees have is just incredible. Since he began this painstaking work of apple hunting, he has gained a deeper understanding of how tough life was for the people back when apples were first introduced to America. He writes, the truth of the matter is these apples saved the lives of the pioneers. The apple was by far the single most important thing you could grow. It had so many uses. There was an apple for nearly every ailment, which is where we get the phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. The importance of these apples might make you wonder why they've come to this place of disappearing or extinct. The fact is that some of them just don't taste very good. Many of them were so bitter that they were only used to make hard apple cider. Others were hard to grow. So commercial growers aren't interested in cultivating these. So they have just fallen away. But still, these apples have value. Each apple has a unique genetic makeup which can add to the diversity of the population. They can be used to breed other apples to help them grow better in various climates and conditions. Genetic diversity is a part of sustainability, says Ben Gutierrez, the curator of the USDA's National Apple Collection. Did you realize there were all these apple organizations out there? I did not until I read this article this week. Each apple discovered, he says, carries a legacy, interesting genetics, a unique story. And he concluded the article by saying, like people, every apple is unique. Jesus knew this. Jesus knew that every person is unique. Every person is valuable. And like apples, everyone is worth preserving. For the good of all of us, every person is worth preserving. Last week, we learned at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he was a smashing success. He traveled to Galilee and began teaching in their synagogues. And Luke tells us that he was filled with the power of the Spirit and was praised by everyone. Everyone was praising Jesus for his teachings and his healings. He was the kind of teacher that one might find that as close to perfect red apple as possible and take to him. But last week, we saw Jesus entered into his hometown, Nazareth, and went into the synagogue. And on the Sabbath, he read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and in particular, a section that says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovery to the sight of the blind. And after reading this, Jesus sat down. And the people just stared at him. Then he said to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The people were so impressed. Everyone said nice words about Jesus and were amazed at his gracious speech. And then in verse 22, we hear these words, is not this Joseph's son? Jesus had incredible public speaking ability for a man who was the son of a carpenter. But Jesus wasn't content to soak up their admiration and praises. He knew that he needed to speak truth, even if it was a hard truth. So he said to them, 
Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. Suddenly the words of Jesus went from sweet and being praised to sour and being condemned. Jesus quoted the proverb, doctor, cure yourself. The word yourself was most likely referring to the people of Nazareth, and they knew it. He expected that the people would want him, the doctor, to heal them, the people of his hometown. He went on to predict that they would ask him to do this in their hometown, the great things that they'd heard him do in Capernaum, and he concluded by saying they would probably reject him because no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. What Jesus was holding up before them was not some sweet message of love and goodness. Instead, it was more sour, more like a sour green apple. Jesus was embarking on his own lost project, turning away from the people of Israel and looking for some valuable varieties elsewhere. But the truth is, he says to them, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months and there was severe famine all over the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow in Zarephath in Sidon. The people of Nazareth knew that story, but they didn't like it. In a time of drought and famine, the widows of Israel were suffering terribly. But God sent the prophet Elijah to a foreign town, Zarephath in Sidon to help a widow there. Elijah raised her son from death and inspired her to say, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. What Jesus is doing here is pointing out the lost one called the widow of Zarephath and discovered in her a powerful statement of faith. Then Jesus said, there were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. The people of Nazareth, as Jesus is saying this, knew this story well, and they didn't care for it either. Naaman was a foreign army commander who followed the instructions of Elisha, the prophet, and when he obeyed Elisha, he was healed of his leprosy. But the others of lep with leprosy in Israel were not healed. Jesus was pointing out the lost one, Naaman the Syrian, and saw in him a true obedience to a prophet of God. At this point, the people of the synagogue could stand it no more. They were content with the people known to them, but those who were lost or those